So it's six o'clock. Uh, I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, and are there any adjustments to the agenda for tonight? Okay. Uh, well, I will add. Uh, I want to talk about the engineer real quick on the roll okay. over here. All right. We'll okay. do that whenever. Yeah. Well, just that's an part of the we can. You know, it could be under the village street project. Yeah, that's just that's an update. A yeah. broad heading. Um, and also, we do need to sign um, another extension for the for the work that was done de demolishing demo demolizing the old store. So, um, but that's. Um, um, okay. So public comment. I assume you're here to talk about the grader and and equipment well, and stuff. That and the brush thing. And I spent okay. I spent several days. Well, two days and a half this last week. Well, last two weeks. Last week mostly. Remember what I, we talked about a couple of meetings ago about yeah. coming up with a list for mm -hmm. priorities for that. the brush cutting and and. Yeah. And I've got a list, and I'll give that to you before I leave. But okay. I just wanted to comment on it. I okay. Well, we'll we'll we're going to get into the yeah. the road work right out as soon as we get through the other <coughs> routine stuff. So because we'll blow right through most of this pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. I got all night. Okay. Me too. Apparently, the state won't let. I was in St. Albans for a fire, but they won't let me go nowhere else. <laughs> so um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then. Um, I would like to make a motion that we approve the minutes for the uh, March 9th, 2020 select board meeting. Second. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, we'll <coughs> see and I'll pass it on to you. Yeah, let's see. Today is... 2020. Go. All right, so town highway stuff. Um, so just a quick update on the old Quarry Road uh, spur. Um, April 9th will be the 30 days. I haven't heard anything from the Washington County Superior Court about any appeal. I think um, said April 9th. April 9th will be the end of the 30-day period for the, any of those landowners to appeal. Um, I think I'll probably call the Superior Court Washington County Superior Court later this week and just ask them if they have heard anything. I would assume that they would contact the town office. Yeah, yeah. You'd appeal, you'd get in writing. Yeah. I did, um, Roy Eastman called me, um, one of the property owners for the spur. Um, he was fine with the decision. He asked that um, me, if the town to consider one other thing is to fix up the class four road that leads up to his camp. Apparently, the, with the grading on the um, Cabot Road, um, there's quite a dip now between the road and then the Class 4 road that goes up so to it. Yeah. Look at it, maybe and, there, and then there's a culvert up at the top of the hill, um, pretty much right where the Class 4 section of the road ends that um, could stand to be replaced. So, so we should have Greg go look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I told him we, we would look at it and, and that it didn't seem like it would be um, a big issue. So. Um, so otherwise they're fine okay. with, with the decision, so we know know that. Um, and that's pretty much it for that update. <coughs> um, so yeah, let's get right into the village street projects here. So the only thing I get is it's an HC card who's going to come look at it for us and uh, draw that for us. Okay. So next week, he's just traveled out of country, so he has to quarantine. Okay. He'll show up next week sometime. Next week sometime. Okay. I don't know where he went, but he apparently is not allowed to go to work. Where uh -huh. he went. Yeah. Okay. I did, um, I looked in my files on the computer and I do have the, um, that stormwater master plan. Um, I haven't had time to actually look, I mean, it's a file that has like, um, almost, you know, like 50 to 100 files inside okay. of it. So I just need to go, you know, kind of figure out where it is. Um, so the only thing we might not be able to do is he wanted to know where the water table was there, if we know where that is, how deep it is on the Valley Lake Road down here by the annex. I don't know if ever, you've dug down there, anyone dug down there? Um, yeah, but yeah. when I put the foundation into that, for the annex building, uh, we were in the water table. That's about been, five feet, four and a half? Five, about, about four and a half, five feet. Okay. Because we couldn't put the, I had to build that up to put the, I, okay. ended up, I ended up putting a uh, 
seven foot wall in the back. So you know, so I'll tell him it's somewhere for because him. because it was uh, down to get to higher ground. I was down in the water table, so mm -hmm. I built that up. Okay, with stone. And so you're about, you're about you're about five to five to six feet. Okay, and that makes sense with the brook yeah. right there. Yeah, that's about what I was guessing, yeah. I think, because yeah. that'll save us having to have them dig a hole. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay, so and I'll that, let you know when I know. Okay, when come. all right, yeah. Um, and I did send an email to Alan May for the for the Better Roads grant for the road work on um, Valley Lake Road. Um, I haven't heard back, but I, I just sent it um, last Friday. So I don't know what kind of you know how they're. <laughs> what's happening okay. with any of that? What's it's probably not much. <laughs> Nobody's at their office. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I can't think of anything else for that that um, that's come up. Um, we I guess we should mention that we did meet with um, Norm yes. Padno, yep. um, and he's kind of waiting for us to come up with a design also for the right. Valley Lake Road. Um, so. All right, so let's move into the greater purchase. And um, uh, let me do this is some stuff I have for Brian. That you're welcome to look at. Um, I also have Greg's file that he's been keeping. Um, uh, but you know, most of it's pretty technical stuff for the greater and some pictures of it. Um, so hang on, let me get my paperwork out. Um, Yes. Um, so Lynn, uh, uh, just to bring you, you probably know all about this, but um, we have been talking, East Montpelier has a, a grader, um, used grader, they have just replaced it, um, and uh, it's now in the hands of Nortrax, who they did the trade-in with. Mm -hmm. um, so we um, had uh, the Nortrax um, mechanics did a pretty thorough inspection of it, um, took samples of the different oils and, you know, look for metals and stuff in it. And they, um, you know, they, based on their inspection, um, the uh, salesperson from Nortrax came and met with um, Greg and myself um, last week and um, came up with, um, you know, they have a, um, a proposal um, with money figures on it. Um, the, so the Nortrex thing that you're looking at right at the mm -hmm. moment, um, mm -hmm. any of those checks, um, our road crew will, will deal with those. Um, so they'll basically, with the um, repair work, upkeep work that they plan on doing um, with... Okay, here's Brian. So. Now is this, this is extra on top of the price? These check marks? No, th these are things that um, rather than having Nortrex do them, um, our road crew will do them. So these checks are, are just designating things that they they won't be doing um, so that we won't be getting charged for them. The road crew can do all of these things quite a bit cheaper with, with very little effort. Um, so, Brian, we are talking about the greater right at the moment. Um, so here's some information that everyone else has to look at. Um, right here. Um, so um, they're, they're, um, they're going to give us $16,000 for our greater. Um, the selling price for the used greater is $68,000. And then we could add another um, roughly twenty-four, twenty-six thousand dollars onto that um, for um, a price of about, uh, let's see, ninety-four, ninety-four thousand dollars for the for the greater um, from them. And they had determined from the uh, testing that they did that they don't need to replace or rebuild the transmission. Um, they figured, uh, judging from the quality of the transmission oil that there are still a good uh, 30,000 hours left on that grader before um, uh, any... Oil. I don't see any place here where it tells how many hours are on that machine. Uh, yeah, um, Greg probably has that somewhere here. I know he's mentioned that figure. 
Uh, let's see, I'll get this file. Um, what Eastmont players done, you know, they have a yearly scheduled replacement <coughs> plan. So um, they're just, you know, it, and the, that year, that, the year, years that they have scheduled for it are up. So, um, let's see, maybe. Uh, to me, that's a nine nine thousand two hundred and five hours. How many hours are on the data that we've got? Uh, I don't know. Probably, I'm going to guess around twelve thousand. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't believe it's any more than that. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sure Greg knows that, but I do not. So, um, so we're we're looking at basically um, ninety thousand dollars to. Pay um, to pay for a bill to Nortrax, and then um, you know these things that Greg has checked off. The the tires do need to be replaced. Um, you know we got a municipal break, um, so the tires would um, six tires would run about eight thousand um, dollars, and um, and then maybe another six thousand dollars for parts. So. Greg has, you know, given us the figure of a thousand dollars for the loan. Um, it should should cover pretty much everything. A thousand dollars for a hundred thousand. Oh, a hundred thousand. I was going to say you can buy much for a thousand dollars. Right. No, <laughs> not these days. So I played around with some figures a little bit um, today, and um, then I don't have a another copy of, of of these figures. But this is just kind of looking at our the heavy equipment replacement fund, um, how much money we have in it, how much money we'll be putting into it. Um, I did talk with the Union Bank about the, the loan. I, I asked for five and seven year um, figures for a $100,000 loan or an $80,000 loan. Um, so, um, so looking at the, and the reason I asked for an $80,000 loan is that you know, we could, we have $33,624 and change in the HERF fund right at the moment. We could use some of that money or um, we could leave it there. So I got, you know, two scenarios for five and seven year loans at the $100,000 and $80,000. Um, so for the greater, um, and just kind of playing with figures, um, for a five-year loan, 3% interest, a yearly payment of $17,172, and then total interest over that five-year span would be $5,680. Um, so, you know, you, and I, you know I, I know we had spoken about preferring a five-year loan and it, um, for the, you know, the lower interest rate and for the lower total interest, it really does seem worth doing that and I um, think that would work out fine for the you know our, our money schedule. Doesn't that come out to almost forty eight hundred dollars or less? It, yeah, I think so. Yeah it does. Yeah. To that, go with the two years less loan, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For a seven year loan it's almost twice as much <coughs> in, in just total yeah. interest. Um, so the payments would be less per year but um, still I'm kind of kinda of looking at the overall um, so with the if you look at the HERF schedule, and Brian, I think you, did I leave one over by you somewhere? Um, I had one for you, I know that. Uh, I'm going to it. You stole this one here? No. Nope. Nope. Um, where am I be? Um, You've got the five year on the back here. I've only got one copy. You, let's see. I've got this one. You've got one, so there is a third one. So Have you got this on yours, Lynn? No, I got five here on the back. Uh, yeah, um, hmm, that's weird. I thought I put it by your place there. Um, so, actually, Brian, can I ask you to sit in the middle of that table? Yep. Yeah. Um, Just try to keep our social. Okay, yeah, that, that's it right there. <coughs> Got to keep our social. There should distance. be two sheets. So that other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This, is the, this is the other part of the. Okay. Quite six feet. 
so, uh, so just looking at the, so what I, um, I started, just made a kind of a rough perf chart and then didn't go very far on it because there's a lot of unknowns once we get past the greater, but each year we're going to be um, between the $90,000 appropriation from the town into the HERF fund and the $14,000 um, that we would be putting into it from the Swenson um, fund. Um, that would be $104,000 a year. We've got the yearly payments for the low pro, um, roughly $27,000, and for the, the bucket loader, roughly $7,000. So um, based on the five-year plan that we got from the bank, we would be, and this would happen in fiscal year 21, the first payment would be $21,465.08. So the total expense um, that we would be putting out that year for the low pro, the bucket loader, and the grader would be $54,841. That would leave us with $49,158 Put in the herf. to put into the HERF. So with um, the $33,000, $33,624 we already have, um, that would give us a total in the HERF of $82,782. So um, if we wanted to take $20,000 from the HERF fund in that in fiscal year 21 to put towards the greater, um, then we would be looking at the $80,000 um, five-year plan, so we would be putting $17,172. Uh, that would be the expense each year for the greater. Um, with a, a total, um, with the $80,000 of um, roughly $6,000 a year in inter total interest for the life of the loan. But, um, so the annual expenses for the low pro, the bucket loader, and the grader, um, if we were to use $20,000 from the HERF, would be $50,548, and so we would have a balance to put into the HERF of $53,451, which added to the $13,624 that would be left in the HERF fund, would give us $60,075. Dollars. Um, We'd be more than halfway toward our next truck's purchase too. Than that. That's that's the thing that I wanted to. One of the reasons I was trying to figure this out is that um, either way that we go, um, and we'll talk about the truck um, next. And the reason that I want us to think about both the grader and the truck is that uh, Greg, <coughs> Greg Parkhurst has, you know, his priority is the truck, um, and if we don't think that we can afford to uh, purchase the greater in fiscal year 21 and then purchase uh, a new truck in fiscal year 22 then he would you know his priority is the truck um, so we would just kind of let go of the greater um, so I, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the truck I mean, I'm kind of basing um, the numbers that are on this chart that I made up um, based on um, the estimate that we had for the truck um, for, for this year, this fiscal year that we that we let go of, um, where basically we would, um, the total for the truck would have come to $132,000. Um, we would have gotten $61,000 from, um, for trade-in for the truck, which um, obviously will be less a year later. Um, so our, our total was $71,000 and then Going with the loan, um, we I think we had talked about a seven-year loan for that. Um, it would have added twenty thousand dollars in total interest, so we were figuring on ninety-one thousand um, dollars, roughly. Let's say twenty twenty-one thousand dollars is what the yearly payment would have been. So, um, looking at you know, looking forward to perhaps purchasing um, the truck in fiscal year twenty-two. Um, we would have the same expenses for the low pro, the bucket loader, and the grader. Um, and then, um, and this is kind of a guesstimate, but I think it's a fairly close figure for a new truck, it would be $22,000. So 
The annual expense would be $76,841, which would leave us with a balance to put into the HERF of $27,158. We would also have, um, if we went with a, a five-year um, loan at $100,000 for the grader, we would have $82,000 and seven, you know, eighty-two thousand seven hundred eighty-two dollars in the HERF fund that could also go toward, you know, a part of that could go towards the truck. So it would, and we can kind of play with some figures. I sort of figured out in my old high school algebra a ratio that we could use. So whatever, That's slide rule. whatever, <laughs> whatever figure we could come up with, we could have a rough idea of what that yearly payment would be if we want to play around with some numbers a little bit. But to me. Um, it sort of seems doable to, to do both, um, either way we go, and then, and then give ourselves two, three years to build that herd fund back up to again purchase another new truck. Um, and um, we still won't get to our golden goal of being able to buy things outright, but um, um, we'll be getting, I think after that we'll be getting closer. The, um, let's see, the bucket loader, um, that payments for that will end with fiscal year 24. Payments for the um, low pro will end in fiscal year 26. And I have little, there's some little numbers underneath um, the chart that has the, the color um, code for the greater loan payments. So I have those dates. And we would also finish paying, with a five-year loan, we would finish paying for the greater in fiscal year 25. So after fiscal year 25, um, you know, we'd be paying for two trucks. Um, and, you know, after fiscal year 26, um, obviously we'd be replacing the low credit at some point, too. And that's all, you know, that's just too far out to really kind of figure right now without knowing what we're going to be paying for a truck. But it, to me, it does seem doable to do buy the greater this year, um, and then um, buy the greater in fiscal or a new plot, a new plot truck in fiscal year twenty. Can I, can I ask you a question about? This? You certainly can, and I, you know, I just I wanted to throw these yeah, figures yeah. out and um, go ahead and ask. Well, what I'd like to know about the first thing I would ask about the greater is, mm -hmm. um, what's the priority for that? What's wrong? Do you figure that? that needs to be replaced at this point? There's, there's, actually, there's nothing major for a priority that needs to be replaced. We have, we're sort of anticipating the, oh, that you know, we need to replace the transmission. Yeah, I thought but you already did that two years ago. This is, oh, the old grid. Old grid. Okay, well, um, there's nothing, there's no priorities in, in re replacing the old grader. What this grader would give um, the road crew, it's heavier, it's four-wheel drive, um, it would allow them to do the grading much more efficiently. Um, well, there's a difference of opinion there, and I don't want to argue that because no, no, I'm, I'm not the argue, one you need I'm to just, argue I'm, that. No, I want you to tell me, but that's what I asked. No, I'm not going to argue with okay. you, but, yeah. but, I, but I do know the difference. And, right. and <clears throat> you know, I'll, I'll explain to you what, what my view is. And, it, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. and we don't need the extra weight. That grader, for what we've got, is perfectly fine. I mean, for the weight one, but then, right. you know, and I run that greater as much as mm -hmm. people say. Probably but more. Yeah. <clears throat> but what my point is, um, when you're going to go to an unknown, you've got, you put tires on this greater, you're going to pay $8,000 a year. Yeah, it isn't an unknown. We're, we're doing quite a bit of due diligence to have well, a good no, sense I mean, of what I'm saying is the greater you've got now, you've done the transmission in it two mm -hmm. years ago, I think. Wasn't it two years more, ago? Well, quite, Harry was still... So it's been three, maybe? Might be four, three. Might four, be three, four, but still, four, you're, four, you're still looking at um, <clears throat> six to 7,000 hours mm -hmm. of what you'd expect. You've got new tires on it last year, mm -hmm. which is another $8,000. Yeah. And as far as I can tell... Well, actually less, because there's only four tires on that one. You only put four, you didn't put two in front? No, I don't think so, just the back ones. Okay. But anyway, I don't know. But anyway, sure. that, yeah. whatever. Well, yeah. what my point is, until you pay off that, that that grader is sufficient, it's been sufficient since they bought it. Would you agree that it had 700 hours on it when they bought it? And you're going to buy something. The town of Eastmont Payer 
has a lot of roads. Mm -hmm. They use grader. Yep. They grade every day. Mm -hmm. Compared to what we use, the grader we've got, I, before I would agree to anything and not make a stink, I'd like to have you guys come up with exactly how many hours you actually use a grader a year. Mm -hmm. Damn few. Wow. See what yeah. I'm saying? It's compared to a town like, like East Montpelier, who runs a grader every day except when it's pouring rain. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. We, you, you buy a grader for $100,000, which you're yeah. talking here, um, compared to what it did down there, it's going to settle in the town garage 60 to 65, 70 percent of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope we can get that. Well, I, 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 yeah, I would imagine graded. it would be used more than well, that. But mm -hmm. I think one of the things with this, Lynn, is that you know we know that we're going to need to get a grader at some point in the in the near future, and this is like you know, right next door. It's a golden opportunity. It's used. Um, it just seems like too good of a deal to pass up, and it would allow um, the the. You know, the grader would allow the road crew to do more grading per hour, I think. It's definitely, you know, we would be able to have a front rake on it. Um, it's got one of those uh, rippers we talked about putting on that. It's yeah. got one of those uh, you know, when they try to culvert dig, rippers, I'll call yeah. it. When they try to dig in too much with the grader, the, the blade that's on there now, you know, Grizz has mentioned that the wheels, it just can't do it. The wheels just start spinning. So, um, you know, and, and I know he's operated a grader for quite a bit, his too. So, um, um, so it just seems like this is a kind of a golden opportunity to get a, 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 new, a new used grader um, that we, you know. Well, the thing is, it looks to me like you're going into a grader that's got nearly as many hours on it. It's just it's six or eight years n newer. It's like, it's so like it's going to have damn near as many hours in the, in the repair, and you don't know what the repairs are. Yeah, well, so right, it's like 12, 12, I think it's 12 years newer. It's got I have the same questions, I don't know. It's, it's, right it's, it's an 06 and the other one's it's 94. It's an 06 and it's a 74. A 94. Mm -hmm. 90, 94. No, 94. Yeah, so it's it's quite, a bit, quite a bit 12 newer. years newer. Quite, quite a bit newer. I don't care about the year, just like I told right, you. Right, it's the hours. Yeah, hours, yeah, right. It's the hours and the years of it. Yes. You know, so to me, and you don't know how many hours are on it. I mean that's the, probably the most important. No, I do. I just I just told you what the hours. It's nine. You said nine thousand. Nine thousand fifty, I think. And it's probably it's not a lot more than that on that grade. Probably not. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Greg would know that. I don't. Yeah, know but that. see, that's that's my point. You're, 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 the wear factor is the hours, yeah. especially with a town like East Montpelier that doesn't let it sit there and idle all day like mm -hmm. we do here. Mm -hmm. We're actually mm -hmm. get work. I mean, they, that's a big town. Yeah. And they got a lot of roads. Mm -hmm. So that that's my. Because a piece okay. of equipment is right. going by that hour meter, and if you mm -hmm. could, if you could come up with a hundred thousand dollar grader with four thousand, I guarantee if you look around, you could find one for that money mm -hmm. with half that amount of hours. Mm -hmm. no. And it may seem like a golden opportunity because it's each small payer, but that doesn't mean it's a good deal. I think it is a good deal, whether it was you know Bennington or or well, somewhere out of Kansas. You um, realize the graders for sale all over the country. Right. And what we would like to do, and it's nice to have one with that, where we are able to actually talk with the road crew and know how it's been used, and you know, it's a much better, you know, sense of, of, you know, the history that it has had. I know that um, it's basically had one operator the whole the life of the machine, an older, you know, road crew member. So you know, we're kind of assuming that it was pretty well taken care of, um, and that the person running it knew what they were doing. Um, and we are going to have a third person um, give it a good going over too. Um, I think his name is Patrick Lane. You probably know who he is. Ted Lane. Yeah. Ted Lane. Um, yeah. Ted Lane. You should ask. Lane. If you Ted don't, Lane. you got to get him into it because he's well. He lives down East Montpelier, anyway. and he probably done. Um, he's a cat man, but he's probably done the repairs on it. Yeah. Because yeah, I wouldn't want to have even consider it without a third party yeah. inspection yeah. first. No. Yeah. Yeah. But my point is, and well, you, if you guys are hell bent on, well, I'm not. I can, I can speak for me. I don't know the answer. I mean, I, I was, I, I get mixed messages. That's my issue, because we say we need the grader, and then when we were having the meeting the other day, he said, well, the dump trucks are priority. It's like, well, do we need a grader? We don't need a grader. That's so, the concern I got. That's right. that's my thing. You're spending a lot of money. Here. Right. Well, I and, think, I think the feeling is is that you know we can get by with the grader that we have. Um, the truck is a priority, um, but then again, here is this used grader right next to it, um, and it does look, you know, we, we're definitely, it is a chunk of money, um, but, you know, it'll be at least the same, if not more, 
for a use grader anywhere else. Well, I'm not going to agree with you there, but I've been looking at this stuff uh -huh. for the last six, seven months. And this this price is, there was a grader down to Nortrax, mm -hmm. cat grader that came from uh, New York, that I went down and talked with them. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me, look, I know it was in better shape than this one. Mm -hmm. Here, and it was a size bigger than the one we've got now, which was Caterpillar, mm -hmm. instead of a John Deere. Mm -hmm. And we could have bought that. I talked to them down there at Nortrax, and I, we could have bought that for $53,000 outright. Mm -hmm. um, this list over here, for me, just scares me, this, this add-on thing. Mm -hmm. To me, if, you gave, if they gave you that, that's $26,000, then you've got a decent deal. Well, that is what it's going to be, $26,000. Add on. Yeah, add it on. Yeah. Add it on to the sixty-eight thousand. Yeah. Yeah. If that was in the price, it was a decent deal. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. See what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I. If you, your guys are spending the money, but I tell you what, that just that, uh, it doesn't make. If, if our grader was at a point where it wasn't going to survive mm -hmm. for the amount of hours you put on it, I'm guessing. I don't know, but I'm guessing you don't use that grader more than 300, 350 hours a year. I don't know. Yeah. It's just like those trucks. It's the same mm -hmm. argument that I made with you with the trucks. Mm -hmm. When you when you go into debt of uh, $150,000, $200,000, mm -hmm. and you don't drive a truck only um, 15, 18,000 miles a year, mm -hmm. but my point is, that to, is it cost effective right. to spend that kind of money for what the usage is of that piece of equipment? Mm -hmm. That's my whole point. And right. as a taxpayer, yeah. I look at this trying to, you know, it seems to me like you're you were you help them on getting another truck, two more actually, which I don't agree with. Well, one more would be perfect. Uh huh. But one more pretty soon, and another one, you know, a few down years ago. But down what I'm road. getting at is we don't need the other one. But anyway, what mm -hmm. I'm getting at is you're some say you have a major problem with that loader, and this what you're talking about here means that you're not going to have the money to do anything about that e uh, excavator or rubber tire backhoe. Evidently, you've blown that off and decided that wasn't worth it. Well, we did, we definitely got we talked to the road crew about that, and we definitely got different opinions from the two two Gregs about a rubber tire backhoe or an excavator. And right at the moment, it's just kind of has kind of gone back to just the excavator. But that's a conversation that. Um, well, one thing that bothered me about that at all that this end while we're here, uh -huh. that Greg's been around trying to hire somebody with a rubber tire backhoe to clean culverts. Well, we talked to Greg also about that, that that would be an option. Either if we keep the excavator, that we would hire somebody with a backhoe to clean the culverts and keep the excavator, you know, for culvert work, etc. Um, you know, it would be either way. If we bought um, a rubber tire backhoe, then we would probably be hiring out um, an excavator well, or renting an excavator. So it was, we've my, already... My idea, and I, and I mentioned it to you before, when you do that, when you do the rubber tire thing, you have two, you kill two birds with one stone. You mm -hmm. make it so you have an extra loader to load sand in case the loader bra mm -hmm. <laughs> breaks down, which you mm -hmm. don't have now. Mm -hmm. You have no way to load even a shovel full of sand. Yeah. Yeah. And the excavator, when you, if you have to hire, you trade that, which is actually worth quite a bit of money because mm -hmm. they're, they're in demand. Mm -hmm. A machine that size as a trade-in mm -hmm. can come up with a pretty good size of money you can end up with a pretty nice rubber tire backhoe mm -hmm. and with no money mm -hmm. or a damn small amount of money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my point is, just like we talked several times before, if you hire an excavator or an, uh, with an operator with it, you have an experienced person coming mm -hmm. with that machine. Mm -hmm. right. And that's something that we lack now. And I can take you, this spring I'd like to take you guys around and explain, show you what my um, uh, idea of that is, what, what's been happening. Mm -hmm. um, those guys are ditching to state specs, but they're, they're doing something drastic, they're doing a few things drastically wrong. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have any, any direction, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Any oversight. Mm -hmm. And if you hire, a uh, person with, a, with an excavator, there's a pretty good chance you can pick who you get to, mm -hmm. to do that ditching mm -hmm. will have that that experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it can be done correctly. Right. And gone. Mm -hmm. With that excavator, it's, at some point it's worth more. How much you're going to, I mean it doesn't, I just can't fathom where that makes sense to move that new culvert. You haven't done it before. <coughs> and the idea that you got, you passed that on to me a couple of meetings ago, that your idea was, um, that we weren't going to do construction this year, we were going to do maintenance. That's pretty much what That's we're going to do. There are some culverts, 
There are some mm. culverts that do need to be replaced. Yeah. Um, you know, if we do the major work here in, in the... Yeah, you're not going to do that. You're we're going to hire that out. We're going to hire that out. Yeah. yeah. If, we, if we get the um, a Better Roads grant, which I'm hoping we will, and we should know about that pretty soon, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, the main focus will be on um, uh, um, road crowns, berms, and uh, brush cutting. Brush um, but there there are there are there is some culvert work that does yeah. need to be done. And the bottom of you know Charter Hill, um, that was a better road. That was a um, Grants and A Municipal Roads grant that um, most of the work was completed on that. Um, but there's still some more to do, and so that's also on the docket for. This summer to finish um, finish the bottom of the hill there. Um, but don't you agree to me that one of the reasons they got so far behind in their road work and all their other work that they're spending their time? There has been a major focus on trying to meet these municipal road general permit and, guidance. And, uh, and I tell you what, I know you haven't, and I, well, I know none of you have. I spent a considerable amount of time. I went every road except Buck Lake mm -hmm. and West Woodbury, mm -hmm. over and over. Mm -hmm. doing this survey here to figure out what needed to be done. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, like I told Brian today, what I ended up with is going and paying attention mm -hmm. to what needs to be done, not just the brush, but the mm -hmm. looking at everything, looking yeah. at the ditching, looking at the... There's a massive amount of work. Mm -hmm. These, You guys are so far behind mm -hmm. that I don't believe you can do it all in six to eight years. Uh -huh. Just just to cut the brush on East Hill to get it where it should be mm -hmm. is a year. Mm -hmm. And you're not, I mean, I've got, I got a list and I'll leave it with you okay. guys when All it right. comes to this, but there's a lot more to that mm -hmm. than just going and cutting the brush. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's been neglected. There hasn't been anything done in almost 10 years. Right. Yeah. And to me, that is more important than and having a new grader or a newer grader and mm -hmm. having this other, we've got to concentrate. These guys, you've got a three-man crew. Mm -hmm. it, to me, they need to be taking care of this mm -hmm. road work, this, this work, mm -hmm. and honing the roads mm -hmm. and doing the brushes and the ditches. Mm -hmm. If you've got culverts, you get five of them, line them up and hire somebody to come with a machine. Mm -hmm. One man from the town crew mm -hmm. can go with a man that you hire with an excavator mm -hmm. and put it, when I did it with Gary and EJ, mm -hmm. With my excavator, mm -hmm. when I hired at the town, we'd set it up. Sometimes I could do three a day. Mm -hmm. Take EJ or, or Gary would go with me. Mm -hmm. And the other guy was off doing, running the grader. It takes mm -hmm. take one man and the mm -hmm. person that they hired. Mm -hmm. Same with the ditching. Yeah. And you, you end up hiring somebody that's experienced at that and knows how to do it to the state specs and mm -hmm. how not to take the material out of the road. and. Mm -hmm. It all, it all incorporates itself. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to take you guys and show you what's been happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm not saying anything against those guys, but they just, when it comes to this sort of thing, they're just not being instructed properly. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things. They're doing, they're doing work, but it's not, in a lot of places, it's not proper. Right. It, may, it may shut the state up as specs go, mm -hmm. but it's still is not proper and, it, and it's gotten to the point now where you've done enough of it so that now you're going to have an awful hard time maintaining it. Uh -huh. Yeah, the maintenance of it is, is kind of a scratch your head how, how are we going to do this thing, especially well, with all the stone line ditches. Yeah. Well, if it was done properly, I could show you how to do it, but that's mm -hmm. what I've talked to you, i talked to you guys about it before. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. Once mm -hmm. you come three or four years down the road, because it wasn't done properly to start with, then to maintain it, You've mm -hmm. got to spend that money all over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to prevent. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Your road crew isn't going to agree with a lot of things I do, but or that I'm saying. But what I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to contradict with Edwin. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that what I'm bringing up is that you, it, it creates an opportunity to have that work done mm -hmm. by an experienced person and be done right. right the first time. Okay, I know when the you know the people who come and look at the work. You know, we have to have the work um, for for this grants and aid program with mm -hmm. the municipal roads. It has to be looked at after it's done, and they've all said it looks great. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and it does, but they're not looking at the maintenance problem. Mm -hmm. Right. I no, see that's, that. Yeah, that's not what they're judging. That's right. what they're doing. That's I see the same thing. I see the maintenance. Like, how are you going to maintain this? And they don't. They don't care about that. Mm -hmm. 
No, they want that. Yeah. They want that stone dick. I agree. <clears throat> and it's all. It, mm -hmm. I gotta take you and show you. I, I, uh, when spring comes, if you're riding around on a Saturday and you got nothing to do, go mm -hmm. look at the job I just did in St. Saint, Saint Johnsbury, mm -hmm. the practice ride over there. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that we do. That I mean, it, it's so expensive to do this kind of work. It needs to be mm -hmm. done right the first time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just done. Right. Yeah. So, you know, we would have to kind of, you know, if we did hire somebody, obviously, we're, you know, we would be paying for that. So, we're, you know, we've got to kind of figure out how much that is going to cost and how will that affect the highway budget. Well, and um, Well, okay, but you also so got to figure out what those guys that you're doing it to pay them, they can be doing this other work. No, I, underst I understand that part, but, but this would be an And figure it in your budget. We, they always did this way. Right. This would be an additional. You figure it out and how much you can afford. And you hire that guy, and you can do two culverts or six culverts or do a mile of ditch. It's just like I used to. Right. When I had my own machine, I worked for Callis. Uh, Roy would come up, and he'd say, i got three miles of ditching. That's all mm -hmm. I can afford. Mm -hmm. Here, he'd mark out what I had, and we'd mm -hmm. go with one man from the crew and me. Do you have like, just a ballpark figure in your head what one mile of ditching would cost these days? Depends on... See, it's, it's, it's a variable, so it depends on... On if you're just cleaning the ditch, or if you're widening, if we have to make a ditch, make, right? or making a ditch, yeah, making, it's so, make, making a ditch. But you can figure just, a machine like what, like what those guys did in uh, Shaky Hill down there. I went and looked at it. Mm -hmm. um, they were there a week and a half, mm -hmm. and I can do that in five to six hours. Uh huh. The whole thing. The whole thing. Stone dig it, haul away, stone dig it. Tank, re you know, replace the culverts. Culverts, the whole business. In five or six hours. Yep. No, I'll do the ditching, not the culvert. Okay. Do all the ditching all the way down to the in five or six hours. Okay, all right. But what I'm getting at is, I'm not trying to contradict what they're doing. They're doing mm -hmm. what they. Presume they're doing the best that they, they know how they to do. They know how to do. Yeah. And at some point, you're going to turn the curve. Mm -hmm. This is this is just expensive. Here, you want to spend another hundred thousand dollars for a grader. And another one hundred and eighty thousand dollars for another truck in, in another year. Mm -hmm. To me, you've got, and here you're eight to ten years behind on your maintenance work. Mm -hmm. Well, if you keep mm -hmm. that machinery and keep thinking where you're, if you, if you buy them a new grader, what do you think they're going to be with it? Well, they're going to play with it. They're going to be using oh. it on the roads. Okay, but that's fine. But mm -hmm. they use the one they've got is perfectly fine. But you need to do all this other work along with it. Right. Well, they're, I think the feeling from the road crew is that, uh, that with this grader, they could do more miles per, per hour, you know, with, with a new grader. Yeah, you, can, you can grade at three to four miles an hour. Okay. Well, that's, that's, you know, that's their feeling. They can do a better job. They can dig in deeper, you know, to, to try to get out the potholes. They could use that front end rake. And do a better job on well, the, the front end rate because like, we we talked about that. Yeah, and, we did. Yeah. And for about so, eighteen hundred dollars, we put one on this. But the, their their opinion is that, is that the the this grader wouldn't be able to do the work with a yeah, front end rate. Yeah, but two sizes smaller than that. Mm -hmm. Done mm -hmm. the same thing. You right. know. It's just it's just well. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to stay and argue with you because you guys uh, you got to make your mind up to spend the money, I guess. Mm -hmm. But to me. For the machine with 9,000 hours on it, or whatever it's got on it, for that kind of money, is not a great purchase for what uh -huh. you for, for, for your money. Uh -huh. I just don't see it. Mm -hmm. I just I just don't because the one you've got is perfectly fine mm -hmm. and has been mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. And it's a in the, in the in a 2006. I don't know yet. Is that got a computer in it? I don't know. I bet that. it does. Yeah. Probably. There's, there's a, probably. I think the night, late 90s I'm, I'm the last sure the, the electronic the last, diesels. The last John Deere uh, excavator I had, yep. and that had was the 90s. Have. And, and that's one thing you've got. Well, over computers here. came in in the late you've 90s. You've got an emissions free and a computer free grader over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have trouble, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. That makes a big difference. I mean. Well, the grader we have is not emissions free. It does, except it, you know, it doesn't have the newer things to try to cut down on the... Uh, it runs a lot better because you don't have all that That's stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. And if you have less fuel than that new one. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's know. probably obvious. Because my new trucks have to sit there and idle for 20 minutes at 12 or 14 hours. <coughs> and, and, but getting part of that, um, when you guys get to say, this won't happen now, but when you get to talking to trucks, I've been looking at trucks. Mm -hmm. I, 
I can't exactly come to an exact figure, but I can probably save you, spec you out a truck, or do what you need to have done here mm -hmm. for thirty to forty thousand dollars less than what you're talking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's several scenarios that you need to look at. Harry went and bought those two trucks on his whim, whatever, mm -hmm. and he right. didn't. It wasn't done right. Mm -hmm. We can save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Greg wants the same thing as he's got. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you right now, I've been down to Clarence, I've been down to uh, uh, J&B, and there's some deals mm -hmm. on that kind of truck. Mm -hmm. On a freight liner? No, not a freight liner. You're always right. buying freight liners. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> International is pushing, and... Well, I know, I know that our road crew has some opinions about internationals that will probably disagree with yours, so as far as... Well, they can disagree, they can't argue, because I'll tell you what, I've owned them and I've driven them millions of miles, and I'm telling you right now, and the service is excellent. Uh -huh. yeah. So, well, there, there is but, but anyway, that's where the savings are. And, if I, and, and neither one of those guys that are telling you that opinion are taxpayers. <laughs> and the people in here are taxpayers, and that's what I'm looking at. Well, they are. And if I can they tell you, road crew, I, so. that may be. Yeah. That may be. But I'll tell you what, you go to work somewhere, and you tell them uh, they give you a Volkswagen to drive from your job where you're going. You say, well, I don't like Volkswagens. I like Cadillac. What are you going to do? You're going to drive the mm -hmm. Volkswagen, you're going to drive the Cadillac. Mm -hmm. You're going to drive what they give you. Yeah. And that's my point. If you can save thirty or $40,000 and get a truck to do the same job, mm -hmm. You ought to be looking at it. Mm -hmm. The towns, the people, if you put it up for gold, I bet you the people are going to go. Mm -hmm. For the cheaper rig, they'll do the same job, right. whether the town crew likes it or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to me, you got to be practical when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are all taxpayers too, right? Eh? Not just me, and Diane. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, I tend to, you know, trust what our the road crew. Tells oh, I know you. So, I, I so know you. There are, when there are different I know. And you don't trust what I tell you, but that's fine. I take it for a grain of salt, yes. Yeah, um, a small grain. No. <laughs> a small grain. I'm not, I'm not completely foolish. I've talked with you enough so that I know mm -hmm. what your grain and my grain is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, but, like I've told you before, I'm the one sitting here at the table with these, with the knowledge, and I'm the one sitting here at the table that pays taxes. Well, table. I also assume that our road crew has an equal amount of knowledge as, towards this equipment. Greg, Parkers was a mechanic on trucks and things for many, many years before he became a road crew member. Yeah. So I trust their opinion also. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't say I didn't either. Right. But I have a different opinion. Mm -hmm. And it comes from experience. Well, and their money. opinion comes from experience And money. Too. And, money. Mm -hmm. and that, to me, when you're dealing with somebody else's money, which is the town people's money, is important. Mm -hmm. You do everything you can to get the job done and save money. Right. It's just like having four trucks with a guy named town who don't have any people. It doesn't make any sense. You ask anybody that's in this business, it's unheard of. Yeah. Well, the reason we're hanging on to the two old trucks is that they're paid for, and if something does break down, they're there. Um, and they have they did get used this winter for different. Yeah. So it's they're, you know they're there. What, what about you? I haven't heard a thing. You're talking about here next year getting another big truck, but I haven't heard a thing about that one time. You're going to keep that junk for another... Until it doesn't run anymore. That's what happened last time. I mean, you weren't going to put any more money into it, and they went and put ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 into it. I think they did not put ten, what, twelve thousand dollars put into it. Put about $3,000 into it. I heard 12000 Yeah. After the bears? For the five fifty. The five fifty. Yeah. When it went out that one time. Somebody told me that. Last Did summer? Yeah. No, the year before on it. Well, that's that's sure. when the transmission had to be rebuilt. I was, I was still... We didn't have the low pro then when we spent that money. That was... Three, three years ago, I think now. Yeah, but anyway, you know, we could, we could back well, and forth this right. to... No, it says it uh, you're going to do this your damn way anyway. And, but I wanted to come up here and, sh and give you my, uh, another, like I told Brian today, give mm -hmm. you another aspect of it, mm -hmm. another idea of it. And mm -hmm. I, I personally think if you swap that grader for that one down there with 9,000 hours on it, you're, you're a damn fool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not that enough, there's not enough more machine from what you've got, there's nothing wrong with what you've got. You've got a transmission, a new tra transmission. How much do you spend? You're off, off the top of your head on that. I, could, I can't Forget remember right the moment. I can find that figure for you, but, but I don't have it. Several before. thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's good for another seven or eight thousand hours. Mm -hmm. Those motors and those, and those cat uh, graders. Well, the, the people, you know, Nortrax is telling us that this grader that we're going to be buying is good for 30,000 hours with the transmission that's in it now. That's so, a guess. 
That's, that's not a guess. That's based on taking samples and doing a very close inspection of it um, with mechanics that work on these things all, okay. all the time. All right. So most of, them not, most of them don't go for 30,000 now. Well, that's the figure they gave us. Um, going to another subject. Here's well, let me talk on the, on the greater purchase, which, mm -hmm. we, which we're wrong, because I'm, I'm not convinced yet, mm -hmm. <laughs> just so you know where I'm at, because I, I, uh, I kind of side the on this one only because Greg kind of pushed me back when he said he didn't, it wasn't a priority. It's a priority, but the truck is more of a priority. I'm just right. nervous about... Uh, well, there's plenty of, I mean, with, with the funds that we have scheduled to use, there is, the money is there. Um, I, would, I would think that you need to look around more. There's a lot of that equipment mm -hmm. around, mm -hmm. and I don't agree with that price. Mm -hmm. my, my other issue I've got with this is we seem to be looking at purchases one you know we're looking at the grader we're looking at the truck or we're looking at whatever it is mm -hmm. and not looking at the overall picture of everything we got to do and what we have to do it with and how often we should replace those things because you know if we buy the grader then they're going to want the truck which is why i know we wants the truck this summer mm -hmm. or wants to order it and i'm not sure we're going to do that either but um Again, I just on the fence because I just it's it's it doesn't seem like it's a priority. Um, I guess my making myself clear enough. I just mm -hmm. I'm curious as to why Greg thinks the grader is not a priority and the truck is. Is he talking about replacing the one of the uh, freight liners? Yeah, they're not good <clears throat> anymore. Yeah, my issue with the freight liner. I just added up the winners. Mm -hmm. I just was down talking to Tommy down in Hardwick, and they do eight, they do nine winters at actually on their trucks, the eight year replacement. So you get, we're just finishing winter seven, mm -hmm. so we can easily get two more winters out mm -hmm. of it potentially. Mm -hmm. So if you waited if not this year in order the following year, you'd get your two more winters. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. I don't like to look. I don't like to predetermine. Well, we're gonna buy this this right. summer and buy that because because it's like well I. I know we're stuck in that pinch where we got two trucks right next to each other, which mm -hmm. that's a real issue. I never would have been in favor of that. Right. You know, I've got all in, all in your deck a little something for that. You were offered sixty thousand for trading for that freight liner toward the new one, right? Sixty one thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the price of the plow and the wing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Given on the truck. Mm -hmm. And that truck's only got seventy five, eighty thousand miles on it. Isn't mm -hmm. even broke in. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you. I don't I don't care whether you had it. Yeah. It is it is the price of the plows and wings, but those you know those are the parts that do get beat up the most. And you know what the our road crew was looking at is if we you know as we hang on to these trucks, um, if they spent a, a good part of, of you know time this winter, you know welding cracks in the frames of the plows and stuff. So you know they're you know they're if we hang on to them. You know they're fine with that. They're just anticipating um, you know budgeting a little bit more for. The maintenance of the the plows and the wing and um, and the, the you know the chain and stuff for the sanding yeah. apparatus in the body um, you know those, those are the parts that'll that are way better. less than the interest on on a, on a new job. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. No way you're going to spend the interest even the, even the interest payment yeah. on that one too. And the other thing that kind of weighs on the road crew is just you know as you stretch a truck out there's the sort of unpredictability when there's a big snowstorm and. It breaks down, um, and then you know you're you're kind of stuck. Um, it didn't seem to bother you about a loader. You don't have anything bolts in with, uh -huh. and that breaks down. Well, the, lo the 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 loader was bought because you know that was back on in Harry's tenure, and the other loader, the smaller loader that they had, was actually dangerous. Well, they bought use. it back, didn't they? Yeah, they bought it back, and you know we pretty we got a pretty good trade in on the. Well, that ain't my point. Um, so I you're just talking about it breaking down. Mm -hmm. Right. I yeah. I, Anything break down? Mm -hmm. Or what? Fix it. Right. But you know, if there's a snowy road and the truck breaks down and you can't plow it, then you know, then you're going to hear about it from people in town. Oh, yeah. so. You know, you don't. You do the best you can do. Right. Well, do sometimes the best you can do. They plowed this road for many years and many miles. They got now with one truck with no wing and a grader. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that the people are going to complain. Everybody in town now has a four wheel drive vehicle. There were no four wheel drive vehicles. No, they before. don't. One family we can take. One family. <laughs> well, I mean, like, here's what I'm leading yeah, toward: is so this this thing is we. I'd like to have more conversations with Greg on what the priorities, because mm -hmm. I I'm still 
not clear we should keep that excavator and buy shouldn't buy it back. Okay, well, that that was something that did get tabled, and, and you know there obviously there you know we had the beginning discussions that we never really completed. Right, it, we so. just talked about it. We hadn't had an yeah. official. Uh, well, what should we do? Let me add something to that before I forget. I just forgot about it. Yeah. You did that. You, would one of you be willing to go over there and take some uh, pictures of it? I would be willing to go and get you some estimates mm -hmm. of the greater. No. Back rubber tire back oh, back and, and come up with a come up with a uh, a value on that excavator. Uh -huh. You find I think you find that you could come up with a pretty nice rubber tire backhoe. Mm -hmm. I, I'm guessing that that excavator is, is probably worth in the vicinity of forty to fifty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And it needs some work, but I still it, it has it. But I mean, if you had some decent pictures of it, and I can come up. Go down to Massachusetts, that place that I showed you in the book. Mm -hmm. And but it's, I'm not. I don't work for the town, and I'd be willing to to look into that. But I need to come up with a value for that excavator. You can't uh -huh. just go and say I've got an uh, an excavator. And you know, but they're looking for that kind of stuff to trade because that stuff is valuable to, to resell. Yeah. And Pete's mm -hmm. repair it will not sell rubber tire back. Mm -hmm. He's out of the rubber tire, so he can't trade it there. Yeah. But I just think that this town is making a serious mistake by not having a rubber tire. Just like what Fritz's his name said to us today, a town of Stowe uh -huh. yeah. doesn't have an excavator. They have a rubber tire back. What do you say today that that guy that runs that, how many uh, culverts he can clean a day? Yeah, yeah. And that was bunker. I don't remember how many a day. No, but it was 30 or so. Yeah, a day. he buzz around and do them. Yeah. Do them. And he does them, and he does them here they haven't been done in, in years. Well, actually, they have been, they have been, well, that's another part of the whole, all the culvert work that they've been doing. They've worked out a way with the, um, the uh, sprayer to, to actually just blow them out and water. Oh, we're talking about cleaning the ends, too. It's well, not the well, you got to clean it. You can't, right. I'm not talking about the plug culvert. Well, we okay. need to talk about that, too, because there's two of them that they just put in this year, plug, mm -hmm. three weeks after put them in. That's no story. But, mm -hmm. no, I'm talking about cleaning out the ends of the culverts and cleaning mm -hmm. that debris. Yeah. See, and that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, in a year when you have a lot of rain, it needs to be done two or three times a year, not mm -hmm. once every four or five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You and can't do it well with an excavator. Well, you can do it with an excavator, but you can't get the excavator. Greg, yeah. Greg got caught last year two or three times running it two miles down the road, and that's what happens to the undercarriage. And if he doesn't have somebody there, you've got to load it on the trailer, move it down. It takes two men. If you've got a rubber tight thing, one guy can go and clean all them covers. He doesn't have to have somebody there holding his hand and worry about changing it down. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to do a tenth as much a day with this. I mean, it can be done. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it's <coughs> done. But I'm talking about the crew doing a, a, a certain amount of work in an eight hour day and mm -hmm. doing the rest of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, I think for tonight, we, obviously, we are going to make a decision probably not tonight. on the greater. Um, um, and I think we, you know, we spent an hour on this. Yep. But we need to move on. Um, yep. You know, I'll get out of here. I didn't want to attend okay. this much time. Now I've got. You now who's gonna who's it gonna be the engineer on this road project? Yeah. We're gonna hire an engineer. Uh, yeah, it's Ruggles Engineering, the AC card who I've got coming out okay. of St. Johnsbury. Well, make sure that make sure that their state certified. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I think I'll make sure. And that they're bonded. Yeah. And here's the list of, of okay. priorities for the brush. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, I where do you start? I mean, I, well, I know where to start. start at the beginning. My God. Yeah. And I didn't just look for the brush. I went and looked at everything. Okay. What it needed. The, the debris in the ditches, mm -hmm. the ditching that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's unbelievable. When you sit, you know, you go and just uh, specifically look at mm -hmm. what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. It's been neglected for so long. Mm -hmm. My God, it's a massive amount of work. Right. Is that brush cutting like something that has to be done by hand? Like with yes. the <laughs> oh, Are there people out there who are, who are contractors who do that? Or are there people who are on the new jobs? Or? You can, but what do you, what do you got a, a three-man crew for? And mm -hmm. we have a chipper. And a chipper. That's a, oh, that's another thing I want you to bring up. <laughs> want to bring up. Sorry. What about bringing that chipper out and having those guys, they're, they're supposed to be mechanics, and seeing if that thing is operable? It is operable. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay. yeah they ran it last, last year. year. He did? Yeah. <laughs> okay, because everybody I talked to didn't know whether it was... Yeah, I believe last year they had it out, they said. Yeah. Okay. 
But it would don't make much sense to cut a bunch of brush and then you haven't got a rig to, to chip right. it. Chip it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But seeing how this kind of weather, when they're sitting over there in the garage days like today, not doing a damn thing, like that's well, something like that. Could you, be, they mm, were not sitting around today doing. Oh, okay. They were getting ready for the snowstorm. Oh, okay. So. All right. I'll take your word for it. Okay. <laughs> I know better, but I'll take your word for it. So you, you were at the garage and you knew what they were doing all day? Yep. See, that's what they were like. <coughs> they, they were, one of them were going to hardware. The they were going to get parts. You were going to grade with West Right. Yeah, they were. The green. Now, here's the list. Tried to do it priority wise. Oh, to not start from top down. Okay. Yeah, top down. But when you, but they, you, if they go around the book, anybody goes around the book, you'll find that some of them are. There's second, because it's not, the you know, whole okay. roads don't need it, but right. there's but, um, Andrews Road and North yep. Road yep. and several spots of East Hill. But see, like Cab Cabot Road over here is going to have to be hired with, because there's a phone line that runs right. set the road and there's a lot of overhang. That's what you've got more than anything else, overhang. Right, right. So it's leaning there, branches that stick way out. You have to walk in the woods quite a ways to get them. You're going to have to do what they can do and then hire a guy with a Yeah, because if it's up into the wires, you got to have yeah. somebody else yeah. do it so right. we don't get into them. And put that in, we want to be on a bid list. Okay. To do this work. Yeah, to do yeah. this okay. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I can get a design right off and we can get working I'd on like that. To, yeah. Yeah. So, you don't have to put the design out to bid? No, no it's only about no, 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 the design. Yeah. It's less than $8,000. Yeah. Okay. No. Um, if you had an estimate of what that. No, 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 we got to get the design. Then I can get No, I mean, he's, he was, uh, we had to prove the money that he was out of state last week, so I'm no. just going to get him. Hopefully, he'll come next week. That would be a grant job, right? Grant money? If we get the grant. Yeah, which we oh. should know about. Within a, within a month. So is the grant for the, the drainage thing or to fix the road? No, there's two different things that are happening. Um, to do the actual work on the road this summer, preparing for the paving, um, that's the Better Roads grant. Um, okay. The other grants are for these fancy erosion, infiltration, flood. Okay. Because we're going to, whether we get the grant or not, we got to do something. Because we still got six inches of water in our building. they got to, yeah. we've got to fix that road. Yeah, no, that's money that's, or no money. Now, there's a catch basin yeah. designed into that, you don't know. Yeah, there are catch yeah, basins, per, you know, pool one, rock line, there are primitive catch basins designed into it. And sometime in the future, um, there may actually be a, a, a fancy device as a catch basin. Yeah. But that's a long time down the road. Because yeah, what I'm what I'm instructing him to do is get the grades right on that road, get it down, get it ditched away, and then they'll have to pick up from wherever that water goes now and do whatever yeah, they're going to do. There'll be a couple of catch bases. But I'm going to instruct him to get the water off and away from the road, at least so it's not building up the way it is now, mm -hmm. particularly yeah. right where the pavement meets the. Yeah, they're going to have to. That's all going to have to be uh, taken yeah. down. Yeah, he's thinking he might even, that's why they want the water. They may have to put some fabric in there, you take it up fabric, the fabric, and then put you'll, the material. They'll be afraid, but that's, yeah. but you'll have, but if you do that with the certified, that we mean. Yeah, he is, he does town, that's what they specialize, you town. Get, you aren't going to get flood by night. Yeah, he does yeah. town road, that's what I looked them up, and that's who was yeah. recommended, because they do a lot of town work, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've that's, never used him, but. But anyway, when you get a set, you can call Mike yep. and give him a. Sure. They'll yeah. bid on it, they're interested in bidding on it. Perfect. Because it's about 208 feet of road is what it yeah, is. That's about what I said. Yeah. 280, 280, sorry. Yeah, I said, I told them 300. Yes, yeah, so that's why I guess 300. I measured it with my wheel up to the upper end of the school driveway, and that's about... That's about well, I said to get that done in a closed school, but that's all right. Okay. <laughs> right. That's about the way you work. We own the building, so you want to fix it anyway. <laughs> all right. I've, I mean, I've... Yeah, more than I intended to. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, but anyway. When you get around and talk about trucks again, I'd like to... Okay, I'll do, some, I'll do some research if you. Okay. But if you guys want to think about that proper tire thing, take some pictures of that, and give them to me, and I'll I'll do some more investigation. I mean, I'm. Uh, okay. You're the only one with a cell phone, right? Maybe. I got a cell phone. I can go take some pictures of it. Yeah, take, take a few pictures. I'm waiting for the snow to melt, though. Yeah, well, I may be one, but, yeah. but you know what I'm saying is that they, you, you might be surprised what you can come up with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we figured we'll, to know that rule. I mean, yeah. and and the same later on. If it, I'll I'll do some more research on beta. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. I know you don't want me to that well. No. Right, so. Corey, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to stop you. Know that. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, let's see. So just uh, briefly. Um,
Awesome. Grizz told me today that he's he's going to um, put himself into uh, in seclusion for the coronavirus. So the road crew basically, after the snowstorm, he'll be available if there's more snowstorms. But he's basically stopping work. Why is that? And so we'll probably be Greg and the two part timers that will be continuing. Yeah. Is that because he was His exposed age, or something? Oh, no. no, he hasn't been exposed, but he doesn't want to be. Right, they're recommending people 60 plus with any type of health condition should right. get out of the public forum. Yeah. So the ambulance squad's losing half their staff too. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Grizz oh. Gr oh. is going to do that, um, and the Greg and the two part timers, um, you know, are still going to. They'll just continue. split that extra time. Yep, I guess so. <coughs> so. Um, I'm sorry, you said which Greg? The Grizz. Grizz. Grizz so Greg there. Adams is also known as Grizz. I know so, that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, so Grizz is the one that's going to seclude himself. Yes. For, yeah. yep. Did he say for how long? Uh, he didn't say for how long, but it sounds like for, you so know. So what do you use those balances or how are you paying him? Well, you know, obviously, I don't know how much sick leave he has. He was going to be on vacation now, and of course he canceled that. So, but well, I guess that was he doesn't. canceled? The cruise was canceled? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Nobody's going anywhere. Who, who's going to get on a You're not going anywhere. No, no, I was surprised he was still excited about so, the week. No. Ago. Why I'm bringing this up is we should make sure Brandy's keeping track of these hours. My right. suspicion is there's going to be some federal money. <coughs> That's if we may be able to credit him his time back. Yep. We'll get paid for that time. So I need to. I think we need to make sure we're keeping track of those hours that yeah. he's out. So make sure he's clearly delineating what hours he's out because of the COVID thing. Yeah. Well, we we'll, we'll have his time sheet to work with if he is, if he is in. And um, I, however, Brandy can keep yep. track of it because I know at the state they're keeping track of it. Yeah. I was going to check with the employer <coughs> if, you know, if, he, if he would be eligible for. Um, because uh, no obviously he won't be unemployed. Good, right? Yeah, he won't be unemployed because he's not getting laid off or anything. Right, right. But if it went on for eight weeks, I just don't know. We'd have to make a decision on paying or not paying. And yeah, I'm hoping that they're supposed to come through with something else at some point. Yeah. So has yeah. the board made a decision? Somebody told me, and I did didn't come directly, but that your the board has decided to pay people who have to miss work because of. We have not. We have not made that decision. That's why I'm asking the question. It's, yeah, I think this okay. issue is going to sneak up on us. Mm -hmm. So we need to be yeah. thinking about this because I, um, we know it might be more than one person coming up, and you could have an issue. So yeah. it's a good, it's a valid point. And it's the same reason I, I, he's stepping back. He's got lead balances, but when it, if it goes on for longer than a few weeks, then we have to be thinking yeah. about he, that. I mean, he's looking at you know if, if, if the leave is used up, he's still not going to work, and he'll just go off either not get paid um, or. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there'll be some kind of unemployment, you know, um, you know, the state Which will come up. Probably, yeah, I don't. Yeah. So, so we, we've got to look into that. I know yeah. he, he mentioned that his, I think a grandson is, or somebody in his family is looking into that for him. And I told him that I would also contact uh, the employment um, department and, and kind of try to get a sense of what. I think we'll get some help. direction on this yeah. after a while because the yeah. state will. The state's going to step up and pay people. Like they're telling you to just, if you're sick, stay home. Mm -hmm. And you, know, you, know, so you might be out for two weeks as a special code. Mm -hmm. and, but the state will pay it, and I'm assuming eventually get reimbursed. I'm thinking that yeah. we may get the same opportunity. I just don't know that yet. You know, like with Laura, she, her, her son is, has to be homeschooled now, and he has she to has be, stay home. Yeah. He has to stay home a certain, like an extra hour in the morning to make sure he gets signed on to his classes and stuff right. like that. But then, so. Seems like that would be an hour that so my, my best has to be gone for, not all day, but yeah. my best bet. I think we should have to make sure Brandy's just making sure we know which mm -hmm. hours people are off for the COVID. Right. So mm -hmm. if the opportunity comes up, we can mm -hmm. get reimbursed. Yeah, because I, I would rather, if, if there's going to be a program, we could refill someone's leave balances and they could be paid out of the federal account mm -hmm. if that ever right. comes mm -hmm. to pass. Yeah. And we right. will have to make a decision if it goes longer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't have an answer for you today. Yeah. I think we won't. I mean, things changing so dramatically every day. Yeah. Maybe yeah, the latest yeah. speculation I heard is that this thing won't really be, it'll never really be behind us, but, you know. Um, the ugly part might be. In May years. into June, probably yeah. before, mm -hmm. before the, um, things might return a little bit to what they were before. Um, oh, yeah. Agenda. Oh, well. Uh, yeah. Everybody think I'm probably going to put it into that. Um, so that's pretty much the only thing. I mean, obviously, there's still 
The roads are in pretty good shape with this kind of freezing and drying. Um, they haven't broken up completely, so really I hope we don't have to repeat the last year. Remember, they dried out a little bit, yeah, and then yeah. <laughs> we thought we'd gone through mm -hmm. mud season, and all of a sudden it went straight to heck. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, so that's pretty much it for <coughs> the town highway report. Um, the town treasurer's report, um, first yeah. I want to note that Brandy, um, you know, she brought her husband to the Central Vermont Hospital last week. Um, and as, as you probably know, um, there was a, a medical worker there um, who tested positive for the COVID-19 virus. And so she was contacted by the hospital that there's a possibility that uh, she and her husband were infected or whatever you want to call it. Exposed. Exposed, yep. we'll call it. Mm -hmm. So they're self-quarantining themselves. Um, Brandy, at this point, at least for the next couple of weeks, will only be in working at the town office on Sunday um, to do the payroll. But here's another one. If she's having to take time, we should make sure we're keeping track of her hours. Right. Because yeah. that's not by her choice. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and... Um, but we'll, she didn't tell the listeners when they were in there on Sunday, uh, so hopefully they are not secondary right. so we'll make sure level of we'll make sure that everybody knows i did talk to her about it and there were things that she was going to do that she didn't do that would have avoided that happening um, but now ron is much better about staying home <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would encourage everybody to stay home and not go places unless you need to yeah. mm -hmm. so she did prepare um just a brief treasurer's report that i'll read off um so for the last, since our last select board meeting, the last two weeks, um, the town has taken in um, $4,506 in cash receipts. It's also taken in um, $4,788.63 for delinquent taxes. Um, and then um, there have been a few electronic deposits um, totaling $1,027 dollars and fifty cents and then she transferred uh, from the money market fund uh, seven thousand dollars to pay the bills and meet payroll for for this um, two-week period um, and then um, one of the things that we need to um, approve and sign tonight is you know we talked about the extension for the uh, yeah. loan for um, the demolition of the, the old store um, and I know at our last meeting, we kind of assumed that we were still within that extension, but no, we're, tomorrow is the last day. So uh, I spoke with a person from the bank, and it looks like Brandy did too. Um, so um, what we need to do tonight is to approve another two-month extension. Um, so extending the uh, loan uh, from March 24th to May 24th, um, 2020. Um, so I would like to make a motion um, that we extend the, uh, the loan with the Union Bank for um, the demolition of the old store um, from March 24th to May 24th, 2020. I'll second that. All, right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You have the papers? I have the paper right here for us to sign. So um, effective. The 23rd see. today? Yeah, today's the 23rd. Did Brian just step out? He didn't take his stuff. So. Yeah, he said he was going to go with some more cough drops. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So dated this... Um, so I'll let Brandy and the bank know that we did that. And I can um, actually scan that and send it to the bank. Um, once I know who to send it to. Ron, Ron, I can do Ron, that if you want to take yeah. it down to the office. Well, I, I can do it from, okay. from home, too. Mm -hmm. so. um, and then I just wanted to briefly talk um, about, uh, there was a, a question with the um, billing at our last select board meeting with the sheriff's bill that we got, um, where they charged us 155 miles for um, coming to the town to spend four hours. Um, okay. So I called um, last week and just expressed that I 
thought that was a, an awful lot of mileage for um, one visit to town. Um, really, that was for one trip? Yeah, one trip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, this a long way. <laughs> fellow named Brett Meyer from the Sheriff's Department called me today and he said that the mileage on the invoice was a mistake. It should have been 64 miles and that they'll now, they'll credit us uh, $56.88 um, on, on the next invoice that they send, which isn't the most current one, but um, it'll be the next one. Mm -hmm. So I will um, let Brandy know this uh, so she can be looking out for it. Um, and I, I guess when I when I called and, and uh, spoke with um, the receptionist, um, I also complained that it sort of looked to me from the invoice that, you know, they came on February 29th, so it sort of made me feel that they realized they hadn't been here at all for the month of February, so they came on the last day. And, mm -hmm. and he just explained that in the winter they tend not to spend as much time in some of the, you know, the towns that they contract with. Um, so, and that they would be here, make, try to make it a point to be here more um, in the future. So. Um, so, we're ready for a town clerk report. Okay. Well, on the subject of the FEMA money, I'm asking if you would, I mean, Michael's been the signatory all along on this. The next thing is, I'm waiting for, uh, you know, FEMA approved those add-ons that we had for the last few parts of the project. They finally approved that a couple weeks ago, but now uh, Waterbury has to, um, revise the grant at, uh, requisition form before I can send in the requisition for the rest of the money. Okay. So when she finally gets that to me, I have all the paper, you know, the receipts and everything together, but I need to have somebody sign it, so. You may go ahead and sign it? I'm, I'm fine with signing Okay. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Works for me. Okay. <laughs> And then there'll still be like $7,000 held back for the final grading and right. the top soiling and so on. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be sub submitting before April 1, we'll need a, another signature um, to submit a grant application to the Woodbury Fund for some landscaping because FEMA wouldn't pay for any, any of the uh, prettying up. So Russell Richardson is coming up with some numbers and I met down there with Peter Peltz last week I guess and we talked about some things and mm -hmm. so I'm just waiting for a number and then Michael I guess the town has to sign that too. Mm -hmm. Works for me. And there was one other thing I thought I'd remember them all but just write yeah, right stuff down. Oh there's this uh, the bachelor thing. Okay. I don't know if you heard any of this story but a woman came into the office um, looking for her tax bill and come to find out she her mother owned a piece of land in Woodbury and she was going to have to try to sell it because her mother had gone into the nursing home unexpectedly as always happens and uh, she couldn't get on Medicaid while she owned this piece of property so I gave her a tax bill and she went away and, and I was curious of course about somebody having to sell land in Woodbury and realized I looked it up and it was a piece of uh, swamp over on the, the, the right. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> well, and, and, and bog and other people saying it. In it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that drains out of Woodbury of Cranberry Meadow Lake. The whole like just 24 acres, I think, and it's the all a boggy, wet stream, um, totally unbuildable, and I had it. I had heard at one point somebody told me that Susan Sawyer said that was like her favorite piece of land in the it's whole town. Very, Lots of wonderful things. There's a lot of rare things. orchids. And it's mm -hmm. a very mm -hmm. uh, unique yeah. uh, Lots wetland. of rare plants and unique yeah. stuff. So I ran into this. I saw this woman up at the nursing home. Her mother's on the next hall from mine. And I said, you know, if you decide to sell that, if the town might be interested and I might be able to figure something out. I looked at the Lister card and that 24 acres was was listed for $32,000, which is kind of crazy. That's but, not buildable. Right, exactly. And in 2007, when the last appraisal was done, that appraiser didn't probably look very carefully at it and just appraised it as a 24-acre piece of land. 
And so the listers looked at it again and they changed the grade and now they're listing it for $10,000. So I was going to uh, mount a fundraising campaign and uh, see if we could come up with that amount to buy it for the town. And then somebody, I'm not going to say in public, but somebody said, I'll give you the money for that. So that was all cool. And we got Chris Green started looking at some of the deeds, uh, some of the information to start creating a deed and come to find out there was another couple that owned that property with the couple. I mean, there's only one of four people that's still alive and she's in the nursing home. The other couple, the woman died in 2003 and the husband died before then, but we can't find any evidence where they left their their half interest to the bachelors. So that's something that's going to hold up things for a while. The lawyers can figure that out. Right, exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, and um, I've been put in touch with, uh, I call my neighbor Michelle, who heads up the Medicaid offices around here. She's very helpful. She put me in touch with, she let me talk with the caseworker, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to talk with the caseworker, probably, because, you know, everything's so private. But uh, the caseworker was very glad that we're helping this woman with her issues and hopes that, you know, she seems willing to go along with whatever we come up with. And she thinks if we have a purchase and sale agreement, that would be a help because she's been trying to, at first she was trying to get Sandy Batchelder to list the property. And I said, that's crazy. And I talked to one realtor locally and she wouldn't even be interested in listing it because she couldn't be able to sell it and would never get her money back. So. But, but the Medicaid office was telling her to list it. So she was going to list it. And then last week she said she was going to list it. I said, wait, you can't. We've, we've made an offer. If you list it with a realtor, they're just going to want their portion of the money. And they're, you know, so we're going to confirm that with a purchase and sale agreement. Chris is going to work on that. And so if we can get that signed before the next uh, select board meeting, if you could authorize Michael to sign that. So, still going to be a little while. But. Yeah, so I just let, I'd like to give Brian and Paul a little bit more of a fill in on this. Oh. Well, in that, in the, you know, having been on the Conservation Commission for uh, many, many years now, and uh, you know, Susan has spoken of this piece of property for years. Um, and uh, you know, the Conservation Commission sort of looked into this property three or four years ago, I contacted um, Susan also, and it just seemed like, well, there's no way the town's ever going to be able to um, purchase this. And, and, you know, they were they were interested in selling it then, but, and, you know, so we were thinking, well, maybe we could try to get some kind of cons conservation easement on it, but it's not, it's their property, that's up to right, them. Right, they have So we, you know, that was something that we just kind of let go, and then all of a sudden, you know, this is happening again. And, you know, there have been a number of state naturalists that have come there specifically to see what's there. It is a, it is a very unique piece of property. Um, it would be, um, you know, Susan would be forever grateful. Also, um, but it would be a, an, an interesting piece of property for the for the town to own, simply for the fact of, of preserving it the way it is. So my understanding, is someone donated the money. It wouldn't cost us any money. It wouldn't cost the town a cent. Yeah, the Conservation yeah, Commission agreed if there's if there's a few hundred dollars of legal fees on our end, the Conservation Commission agreed yeah. that they could probably handle that. So I don't know. But the other, the, the bigger legal fees are going to be on the buyer's end, and that will just come out of whatever we pay per. Yeah, we'll have to pay the that, title that, search and all that. Just a little bit, you know, that much less that Medicaid will end up getting. Right. And I do feel, I think it is up to select board because this will technically be, it town will land. become a piece yeah. of town property that we should prove whether or not we move forward yeah. on this. Um, mm -hmm. And there would be, Michael suggested, that there be some conservation language in the deed that yeah. was going to be similar to the town own portion of the wetland here by the school. There's mm -hmm. language in the deed um, for and that. It, you know, and somebody's always going to say, oh, that's less money on the tax rolls. It's well, these people money. have been paying too much money for the last 20 years. They've been paying, loyally paying their, I think it's up to like $800. Yeah. So that's that, 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 that would, would. Well, it's not about tax money. Right. 
dollar per person <laughs> or dollar per landowner. So, so it's just, except for this last problem that's come up with the, with the ownership, but it seems like a pretty nice deal. Yeah, I mean, everything's kind of falling into place without even having it. Mm. Now there is a little glitch, but that's par for the course, I guess. Very much. Um, so do you guys have any questions about, you know, if the town were to acquire this as a piece of town property, any, any thoughts about it or questions at all? I don't. I mean, as long as it's not buildable land, if it's just wetland, I... Right. There, is, there is some land land, you know, solid ground land to it. It's, it's a minimal amount, and there's no right of way into the land. Think there's a forested slope on the other side yeah. of the wet area, but there's no no way to get there no without get to it. going through the wetland and the gotcha. state would never yeah. allow that. Hmm. Any, any thoughts or questions, Brian? No. It seems like a no-brainer to me if that's what the Conservation Commission wants. The Conservation Commission, and I, I'll speak for them um, as a member of it, um, would definitely urge the select board to approve this. So, so um, I'll make a motion that um, that we approve the um, purchase of this 24 acres of, of valuable wetland over um, by Cranberry Meadow Pond. I'll second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay. So, what's the cost on it again? It won't cost the town anything. It'll be about ten thousand dollars, and there is a somebody donated the money. A, somewhat anonymous um, town resident who has donated the money already. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, anything else on your town clerk report list? Um, I just you know I'm finally getting. I got caught up. If I have another couple of quiet days, I might be able to get my reporting caught up from the behind <coughs> ever since January or February. And, yeah. Good luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, I could stay homesick, but I just soon I'd rather get the work done now so in the summer I can spend time doing other I can actually take a vacation time and do something else. <laughs> I was hoping that I, could, I could get caught up on my town list with it's not, not being already. able to work until <laughs> COVID-19 uh, um, yeah. sat on the nest here, so mm. but hopefully still anyway despite that. So what I would like us to do, the four of us, with the time that we have remaining, um, I can kind of update you on stuff that has been happening. You know, we had that meeting last Monday to kind of discuss the town response to COVID-19. Um, and, uh, you know, from that, um, with the help of... Sure. This is loud. Oh, yeah. 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 Are you okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, from that meeting, um, you know, one of the things that was mentioned is coming up with a list um, of people in town that might be willing to help out mm -hmm. should it come to that and also to have a list of <coughs> people in town that might need help. Um, mm -hmm. So um, with the help of um, Diana and Norman Etkin, um, who's been very helpful with this project, um, we've come up with a, a volunteer list. Um, I don't know if I sent that to you guys or not. No. Um, <coughs> and well, the, well, it's, well, it's been, it's been yeah. on the front porch yeah. forum. I saw that. It's yeah. On, I did actually. I, I did send it to everybody in town. I think uh, with a notice about um, COVID nineteen. I'm pretty sure you guys were a part of that. I did see that. Yeah. I sent it actually to everybody in town who I have an email address for. <coughs> trying to get the word out. Um, and uh, we have had some responses, mostly for volunteers. Um, so I was hoping that tonight we could kind of go look at a town map and maybe just quickly go road to road. And if anything, somebody comes up in your radar that you know about, um, I'll, I'll write it down on the list and we'll follow up on that. Um, and so, and then Ben Witt did receive the, the notice that I sent out, and he has since taken it upon himself to create 
the volunteer, the needs list on the uh, town website. Okay. Um, and um, <coughs> we have a way of monitoring that list, uh, so it stays private. Um, but we can use it for information. Um, he's also going to be creating some other, like a, a bulletin board on the website. So if we get new information from the state or whatever that could be shared with the town. I wish you would just volunteer, or somebody would just volunteer to do another Facebook page. Well, we do have, I, I talked to Paul about this, but this is, the fire department has a we Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And I hear about a Facebook page that the yeah, neighborhood watch. Watch. Yeah. Yeah. And Laura gave me the address for that. I haven't tried to get it yet, but I had, I had told him. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think I hope you feel better, Brian. Yeah. Really? Just a cough, but yeah. man, it's horrible. Yeah. It's a dry cough. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> dry. Yeah. So I, All right. Laura Good night, gave, yeah. Good night Brian. So Laura gave me the address. For that, for that. crime and something. The Woodbury yeah. Crime Watch. Uh, yeah, so yeah. I'll, I'll get myself on that, I guess. But it still would be nice to have a, one that didn't have crime involved. Right. Well, the problem with the last one was the keyboard warriors killed it. Right. Because nasty people get on there and we're really nasty. Exactly. People, that's so why. So shut it down. Yeah, so right. So that's the danger. So we, you know, we, we're, that's not appropriate for those things. So right. more people behave on it. Right. And that we're, we're, I'm working with um, Skip Nizzi, Skip Marcassani, Laura. Um, our next select board meeting, I'm hoping, will be um, via Zoom. Okay. Um, we, Laura, tr sort of set up the laptop so we could try it out tonight, but we broke it, it didn't already. Work. It didn't oh, work. <laughs> so, and I, I was speaking with Leaf, who's behind the camera right here. Um, if we are able to do that, and we have three weeks, almost three weeks, to get this right, organized. Right, we have next week, yep. Um, <coughs> HCTV can plug into that also and somehow document the oh. meeting um, so that it's available to the oh, That's the hope. That's the hope, yeah. yeah. So you would all sit at home on we your would all computer. sit at home. And, and you know, it's too bad Brian just left because I don't know if he would be able to do that or not. Mm. Well, somehow, though, you'd have to have a port, you know, it's where people could call in and then they could right. join if they want to attend the meeting. Yeah, so, you know, I could have a setup like that at home with a I'm speaker not sure if you'd have to have a town place where someone without a computer well, could come to. Right now, the legislature is looking to relax the open meeting rules because, you know, one of the things with the open meeting rules is that, yeah, sure, you could do phone conference call or uh, Zoom or you know something um, virtual, but there has to be a physical place where the public can come. Right. Um, so, but there, you know, the legislature right now is um, discussing that, and I anticipate that in the pretty near future that they'll relax that rule along with some other open meeting rules, um, so that we could do everything totally Zoom, and, and no one has to be in a public place where somebody could come. Um, that's going to eliminate the people that can access the meeting. So, you know, we might, we could do it as a phone conference call, um, or we could, um, you know, we could have a, a phone set where if people were watching it and they wanted to call in, um, you know, there would be a phone that could be on speakerphone. But right. if, if we're not there in a physical place, um, and having a phone on speakerphone that everybody could hear isn't going to work. So but it would work through Zoom. Um, people would have to, you know, we would post it, we notice it, um, people would log in, those who have the computers and the means to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you can also log in through Zoom and not have the visual but have the audio and be able to speak to it. Right. So there's, um, yeah, I noticed when we were playing with it at the office today and my screen doesn't have a camera but Laura was on the laptop, which has a camera, so I could see her, but she couldn't see me. Yeah, through, through, through the so Wi-Fi, you can do that. Um, yeah, um, that so if we did camera, all I do is turn it around and go to me. Yeah. You can see yourself. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, I, I'm not, I have used it before, but I haven't been the person that actually did the navigating. Um, so, I mean, I tried to set up the laptop. Laura had it set up with some notes, but it didn't. It didn't work, and then the Zoom icon just sort of disappeared, and, and I was at a loss. So, um, but uh, so I think what we'll try to do, you know, this is a, you know, I, the intention is to try to do this to see how it works. Um, 
So I think what we're going to try to do in the interim is maybe try a practice run, just so if there are right a practice meeting. Yeah, practice nothing, meeting. nothing important happens. Yeah. So um, so that should you know hopefully we'll figure out how to do that and we, who has what for equipment um, this coming week um, and maybe try something the following week. We'll see. Keep it posted. Yeah. Um, just to, um, are there any other just thoughts on what might be anticipated needs? I mean, I heard on the news today that from one of the state medical experts, you know, dealing with this COVID-19 is that Vermont is at the ver beginning stages, um, you know, and, and looking at the, the arc of what has happened in other communities, you know, like New York City, other countries, um, they're anticipating that um, the spread of this virus will get much worse uh, pretty quickly within a couple of weeks. Um, and that we are, we have, you know, that many, many more people will become um, infected with the virus. Um, but they are, they have started these procedures. Yes. So hopefully, really hopefully right. that will help. And also yeah. we'll be insulated to some degree by our rural, yeah. Yeah. historically yeah. the rural nature yeah. Luckily, tends to make yeah. it a little less uh, yeah. of a problem. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, I anticipate that even though we haven't received much in response for needs from residents, um, that, that we hopefully... Yeah, the biggest thing I could really see is if someone's housebound and needs somebody to get their medication exactly. or to go shopping. Yeah, for we've, we've, uh, a few people have, like Steve Murphy, for example, has called uh, people in yeah, his just neighborhood. To see. And uh, I even got a call. I didn't realize she was calling to see if I needed help. Oh, well. but <laughs> and that's been my experience in most disasters that mm -hmm. I know who my neighbors are. We're taking yeah. care of them. Mm -hmm. But it is good to have a place that yeah. someone doesn't fall through the hole. Fall yeah. through the some people have shared with me that they also have neighbors that they have already Take checked in with. Right. Um, yeah. so, um, and I'm trying to keep a list of that so we know who is, you know, sort of being watched out mm -hmm. for. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, before we leave tonight, uh, quickly, I, I've got a map. Um, can you think of anything else, Paul, with your emergency, you know, your experience and um, anything else that we should be just anticipating and, and maybe planning for? Uh, it, it, it planning, you're going to anticipate people, if they get sick, or being sick at home. Yeah. Because even on the ambulance, we're not approved to take anybody to the hospital mm -hmm. unless the hospital approves it. Oh, right. So even if you're really sick, if oh. it's not like drafting, not like threatening, they may say, leave them right at home. Don't bring them in here. But you can't administer the test. No, but um, the way they it works is if someone feels they're ill, you need to contact your health care provider, mm -hmm. not the hospital. Yeah. So we haven't seen it happening. What I have noticed is a sharp decrease. Mm -hmm. in emergency calls oh, right now. Really? Go should, figure. I shouldn't yeah. say that. I probably just cursed us. Right. Oh, dear. Should, should we post something like on Front Porch Forum, et cetera, explaining the scenario so that people know? It's, it's pretty well, I, I think it's better to send them toward 211 and the CDC and the Vermont okay. Emergency Management page just because that has very clear guidance on what to do. Okay. And there's so, a lot of a lot of information out there. I don't think we should yeah, start Instead of trying to recreate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think yeah. having the repository of just the list mm -hmm. that we're kind of, and, and here's a resource if you're, you're at a dead end with everything else and you really have a need, mm -hmm. then call here and we'll but try if to people think, it. But if people think they're, they might be sick, they should call their doctor. Call and, their primary, unless they're having a real crisis, like a breathing difficulty yeah. where they think they're that sick. Um, and then their doctor will refer them for Correct, the for test testing or whatever they're going to do. The majority of doctors are sending, just telling people to stay home. Yeah. You know, they're, unless they are turning, like turning yeah. blue from not being able to breathe. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm hearing. So, the, so there now could be people who are sick or aren't getting it I'm sure statistics there's statistics because they're not getting correct. Tested. I think there's plenty of people that could be sick with the virus that are oh, home. Yeah. Or if they're not, they will be because that you know they're not testing. They're just like, mm. stable. Mm -hmm. Unless you have breathing yeah. difficulty or just getting so sick you can't move and, mm. and call. No. Mm. It's it's uh, definitely uncharted territory because every yeah. call we go, we're having we've planned at the fire department for a lack of dispatch center. If they were to all get sick, we've planned for. Trying to, we're, we're not having meetings, we're not having trains, trying to keep our people apart. We're having to be very careful about approaching into buildings because mm. people, you know, if someone's sick there, we don't want the whole crew to have to get tested or quarantined, for example. Mm. So we're having to be very careful. 
Okay, so here's you could have the whole fire service or ambulance squad out of commission mm -hmm. in one call. Yeah. Which is not a good place to be. If we're not here's careful. a list of roads. Um, and I've got a copy for you. Yeah. Probably, you know, maybe just a list would be enough. I also have a map. Um, but I think if we just go through the list, let me get a piece of paper and write on it. So let's just kind of go down the list. Um, and if you think of anybody, um, I will write down the name of the person and the road and uh, figure out contact information. Should we do this on camera? Oh, yes, you're right. We, um, Probably we should, should do, close the meeting. Yeah, we should do this privately. So I would like to make a motion that we, we're going to be doing this privately, folks, uh, for your own and for the people that we'll be mentioning for their privacy. We are not going to do the formality of going into executive session. We're, I'm just going to make a motion that we adjourn the meeting at uh, 740, uh, 7.48. And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. There, that